I think. How would you like me to say, we just an answer any questions? Yep. Excellent. Oh, I did have one. So remembering this is simply a response to a discussion document from Which one is GNZ. It? Where is it? Any comments or questions people have? Before I'm happy to move. I'll second it. Thank you, Councillor Webster. But he's listed by the last discussion. I'll put that all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. That's that one. Item 15, item 16. Right. This has been a very long meeting so far, and I apologise to people who have waited for that. We've got John Duncan, who's been waiting all day. Point. There's that. Thank you, John. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for those of you around the committee who don't know me, I head up the Auckland Investment Office, having come to this role with more years than I care to think about in the finance and investment banking industry, both locally and internationally. And so, with that background and with very little previous exposure or involvement with the screen industry, it would be fair to characterise it or say that I came to this task that you challenged me with in the committee session in July with probably a degree of commercial caution, let's describe it as, and also I could probably confirm to you that unlike the debate in July, I was agnostic as to the outcome. I think, Madam Chair, I should also, for good order's sake, given that the adjoining land is owned by uh, Hobsonville Land uh, Company. Just note for the record that as of today, the Minister of Finance confirmed that he's appointed me as Deputy Chair of Housing New Zealand, so I would just like that on the record, although I should also note that that appointment has been subsequent to this process. So bearing in mind my background and my thinking around this, as I got into the detail and engaged with all the parties uh, in this sort of sector, both here and offshore, I have to say and confirm that uh, at the very least I was positively surprised at the scale and strength of the sector and given its fragmentation here in Auckland it's actually quite difficult to get visibility on it unless you understand where to go and to look for it but it came quite clear and evident to me that there really is something there and I could also quite clearly see the role a precinct or a hub might play in strengthening the sector and lifting it to the next level. The market validation process we went through, which is in the paper, and the EOI process served greatly to assist with that thinking. And ironically, the particularly tight time frame you gave and imposed on me with the resolution in July has had the very positive effect, as it's turned out, of galvanising the industry to think about this as a possible solution. But I think, in short, what I'm saying here is that through this process, I've come to a clear view that the concept of a screen precinct it not only has a lot of merit, but I think it actually has commercial legs. And as one of the senior industry figures who's been sitting around the table as we were sort of working through negotiations or teasing out the concept and the development, quoted, they, he said to me, you know, with the right people in the room and the right amount of time, we should be able to get to the right outcome. And I think that's the right way to think about this. The piece of land was only a small proportion of the scale of the development. I think the industry generally is the view this is a... 80 to 100 million dollar type precinct ultimately, and no one would expect any commercial outcome to be derived in that time frame. So in coming back to this committee and in confirming that I actually don't have a commercial transaction to table consistent with the resolution of July 7th, I would just like to make sure that you're very clear in the understanding and are left with a very clear impression that the outcome around the particular piece of land we were talking about in Hobsonville is a quite distinct and different outcome to the concept of the strength or proposition around a screen precinct. So I don't want people to be walk away from here left with the idea that they were one and the same. The concept and the validity of a screen precinct was not predicated solely on the basis of the Hobsonville piece of land. It's really important, I think, that we understand that. So the only other comment I'd make in coming back and obviously wanting this paper uh, accepted is just to acknowledge that ironically, and I don't know whether it was intentionally or unintentionally, but by providing such a tight resolution in July, you've actually provided a whole 
bunch of momentum, I guess, for the industry. We've already got the industry back around the table again talking about a way forward. So ironically, that focus that was brought to bear by, by providing that very tight resolution, which to be frank was probably impossible to meet in terms of a true commercial proposition, has actually empowered the industry and, and ourselves to actually work out a way to take this forward. And so that's our intention, is to have this paper accepted. My presumption is that that resolution stands in the land out in Hobsonville reverts to its 14-6 master plan, but to note that actually as a, as a result of this process, ourselves and the, the industry are going to engage with the private sector and look at ways we can take this opportunity forward. Thank you very much. And John, I just want to thank you for your sterling work on this together with um, ATED and Panuku Developments. For those of us out west, this has been a really critical piece of work, and um, I know there's councillors who will speak to this, but um, from a west perspective, seeing my colleagues, Councillor oh. Clough and <coughs> Councillor Cooper, aren't here, we're not giving up on a film precinct out west. We're very, very, very committed to making that happen. No, can I just comment on that? Because I think that's important to point out. I, I noticed a headline somewhere today saying we weren't able to get commercial partners. That's not correct. I think there are plenty of commercial partners, and there is plenty of interest in doing this. It's really a function of time and I think anyone in the commercial sector would know these things do take a long time to pull together and there's certainly the commitment to see if we can deliver in that out west region. And I think, you know, we do have the media here. Let's make it very clear that we will land a film precinct in that area. It will be successful and we will have partners. It just isn't going to be at Hobsonville and I think that's the really important take out message from here, this yep. certainly isn't bad news. Councillor Cashmore and then Councillor Crum. Yes, thank you Madam Chair. This has been an interesting process, John, because it's actually brought the industry a little bit closer together, rather than being a disparate set of small functionaries that actually come together as a, a more of a conglomerate. One of the things we learnt about from the Los Angeles trip with venturing some of the film studio precincts there, that it's around that sort of 20, 18, 20 hectare size, gives scale and gives resilience and that's what we need to find. It needs to be out west, if, if at all possible. And there are partners and people out there in, the, in Auckland right now who are willing to head an investment type of this sort of arrangement. So I really applaud uh, option B there. Um, it adds to the initial recommendations in our agenda that actually gives direction to continue to find and the uh, right catalysts to pr produce this film precinct for the city and it does employ a lot of people and does produce a lot of income for the city and at the moment it's going really well. So thanks John, thanks team. Long way to continue. Thank you Councillor Cashmore. Councillor Crum. What happened to the housing? Um, I'll just make some opening comments in relation to B um, and I think B is helpful to have materialised um, but Given your really positive comments around um, how close to commercial things came, um, I wonder whether um, quarter one could be a, a tighter time frame. We, we're used to tight time frames on this topic, aren't we? Um, so I'll, I'll just table that out there and perhaps that's a response from you, John. Um, but I'm also interested in, uh, as the author, it's, I don't know whether it's um, appropriate, Madam Chair, but to hear from um, someone from ATED um, in this context, um, because I, I'm, I'd like to know more about reputational risk from the industry uh, <coughs> flowing from this particular call. Um, we, we do have in our economic development strategy a call to, um, to uh, what's the term, deliver, I just wrote it down, deliver a world-class screen complex. So in that delivery mode, and I know that this report outlines next steps, but <coughs> what exactly does that look like? Is this tight enough? Are we going to get a next step or are we going to go back to wishful thinking, positive comments, um, but voting down something and not knowing what really does genuinely come next? I also just have a couple of questions and um, understanding that, that the Auckland Investment Office is relatively new, um, our, our understanding around how the Investment Office works and operates, so this is just a side comment Madam Chair that maybe it would be really good for us at some stage to have 
a workshop or a discussion with John um, and understand procedural um, process. I'm particularly curious in that line between expressions of interest and RFPs and the role of where our council procurement team start and finish. Um, perhaps we could use this Hobsonville um, um, process as an example to, to run through together as a group. Um, so, Madam Chair, any um, call or cause for someone from AT to, to talk about reputational risk and their perspective on the EDS strategy and delivering? I, uh, so normally I would be very keen that we spent some more time on this issue. I, I think we're going to start to lose a quorum, councillor. I'm very keen that we actually pick this up in our report back, a proper, well-structured report on the wide opportunities of our, for our film sector, hopefully in the northwest, um, from Panuku, ATED and the investment office. I think that would be a more well-structured discussion. The only reputational risk that we have here is if, as elected members, we go out and trumpet this in a negative way. If we go out and talk about this in the way that you have, Councillor Cashmore has, and some of us um, passionately committed to this industry have, then the reputational risk will be managed. I guess that's why I thought it would be good to hear from AT so that they can help us traverse what would come next what they'll be committed to next so that we don't simply get a, a, a report on process and then make our own assumptions. Okay. Uh, Councillor, rather than do that on the hoof now, I'm going to suggest that we perhaps have a bit of a round table with AT on, um, and, and our investment office on what those next steps look like, particularly with you and, and Councillor Cashmore, given the fact that you have had some of those direct connections with the film industry, I think that would be a very useful thing. And perhaps to the next meeting, we can actually discuss what the next steps will look like. Um, and can we also add to that my um, request in terms of um, workshopping the investment office it's a um, using Hobsonville as a, a example for procedural process? Can we just, can we note that I think that would be good I don't think we need a recommendation but and it might be wider than Hobsonville but I think uh, a, a workshop with our um, investment office is a really really good idea okay um, councillor oh, right okay councillor Watson and Walker and yeah, thanks um, no I just wanted to uh, check uh, John that I, that I heard you right in saying that g given the time that you had to work on in this that it, that it was really next to impossible to, to pull together a, a commercial deal g given the time frame. Did, did I understand you correctly in saying that? Well I think that's right if you think of anything of that sort of scale or magnitude it would typically take a, a, an extensive period of time but that you know, there's quite a lot more work to be done to pulling something together and to be honest if I had felt we were within six weeks of something I would have come back asking for that Grace, if you like, it's it's a longer period than that, to be frank, and and I also understand the tightness of that resolution. When I went back, obviously new to the organisation, but when I went back and looked at the history of that piece of land, yeah. I fully understood the tightness of that time frame and and the need for certainty. I'm not in any way complaining that that was an unrealistic. As I, as I note, ironically, probably intentionally, I don't know, unintentionally, intentionally, the tightness of that time frame actually produced what we wanted, which was focus. Yeah. So I'm not in any way, don't misconstrue it as me complaining that it was an impossible time frame, therefore it was a waste of time. No, no. Quite no. the opposite, actually. Yeah. You know, I take that, and, and I, what I also take from, from your comments is that, you know, that, that time, time constraint and focus generated, um, you know, a degree of interest <laughs> and, and a degree of response that was actually pleasing. And, and Madam Chair, when I consider that, and, and certainly in terms of, uh, the, the perhaps the expectations and the, the buy-in from you know a whole lot of, of parties around this specific <coughs> site. Um, I just I just wonder, a rhetorical question though it may be, uh, whether that momentum and uh, you know the fact that this particular site, when we discussed it, uh, had so many uh, benefits and positives that. Uh, 
if there was, um, you know, a, a longer time frame, as, as John has uh, suggested, it was, was necessary to conclude any sort of uh, deal here, that, that then it's, it's perhaps a little precipitate to be chucking out Hobsonville uh, at this stage. And I understand the resolution that was made, but it, it seems to me, and I think the comment was made at the time, that, you know, uh, locations such as this aren't actually... Uh, you know, ten a penny, um, and and despite the you know the the desire to look elsewhere out west, um, realistically, I don't I didn't hear too many other locations getting uh, chucked into the the basket at the time. So I just wonder if it's a little short sighted, given, and if we're talking about reverting to to, to housing, which we're talking about, given that just the you know the phenomenal housing that's going in this general area uh, and, and and the more to come uh, as we we'll see today that if that's a little short sighted just to be <coughs> pulling the pin in Hobsonville at this point given that particularly short time frame uh, and given the, the really encouraging response that we got and, I, I, and again a little bit like Councillor Crum you know it would be, uh, be useful to uh, I appreciate John's comments but also uh, a view in from ATEED here given that that's where we got a lot of our initial uh, briefings from. Through the chair if I could just briefly speak to that. My, my view is actually the best outcome is to move on rather than kind of continue to relitigate. And to Councillor Cashmore's comment as well, one of the things in the back of my mind that always struck me was that if this thing was a, a real success, you had no future proofing ability at 10 hectares there. Um, you had no future proofing ability. If you had housing around the rest of it, you actually had nowhere to go. You couldn't even acquire the next commercial site <coughs> or something like that. So there was always that element of, in the back of my mind, to, the, to your comment, Councillor Crum, the uh, AT had actually had a meeting with a number of the industry, I'm not sure whether it was this morning or yesterday. The observation was made amongst them all that they actually have never been <laughs> all kind of on the same page and collectively keen to go forward. So from their perspective, they're actually now starting to look forward rather than back, if you like. So for what it's worth, for my advice, I, reckon, I honestly believe the right way forward 